Hi there, my name is Mike. Today I'll be teaching you how to use 3.js to import models from Blender or any other 3D modeling software that allows GLTF exports. Uh, today we'll be making this here. Uh, this is an extension of what we did last time. Last time it was just a cube, but this time we use this Lamborghini model. Uh, this Lamborghini model I found on Sketchfab. Uh, this is the creator's name here, and this is the title of this model, if you want to find the specific model. So let's get into it. Uh, first things first, let's, uh, you're going to want to download 3.js master off of GitHub. Uh, I just cloned the repository onto my desktop and I have it here. Uh, you're going to need a couple files from this. Uh, the first one you're going to want to find is in uh, examples and then you need to go to JSM and then you're going to go into loaders. Uh, so examples, JSM loaders, and you're going to want to find it uh, not G-code, gltfloader.js. Uh, that's what we're going to be using. The extension that we're uh, importing this time is gltfloader. So I'm going to put that into a folder on my desktop. Uh, we'll call this three import. Uh, so I'll just copy that so it stays in there. Uh, and then the next file you're going to want to find is in the source directory. Uh, you're going to want in build uh, both the 3.js and this 3.module file. Uh, you're going to need this module file to make the uh, GLTF file work. So just put those both into your uh, folder, your main directory where your project is. Uh, and now you're ready to go. So uh, let's open this up in a new VS Code window. 3 import. Um, one last thing that you're going to want to remember uh, for this particular project, uh, in the past, we've just been opening up the HTML files with uh, just Google Chrome or whatever. Uh, but to, to do this, where we're importing a file, we're going to have to use a live server. Uh, now, that sounds complicated, but all that really is is you need to install a extension called, uh, on VS Code, it's called Live Server. The reason behind that is there's some uh, cybersecurity issues with loading in files from your own computer to a website that you're working on. Uh, I'm not I'm not too educated on the topic, but if you're interested, but if you're interested, it's something called the same origin policy. Uh, that is apparently I don't know. You can look it up. There's a Wikipedia link. I can put that in the description below. Uh, but yeah, so essentially, you're going to need this live server, and you're going to need to. Uh, I'll show you how to use it. And then, of course, if you have your website actually deployed onto a actual server, you won't need to do anything different. It should just work. Uh, so, okay, let's make an, our index.html. As per usual, I'm going to start with the emit abbreviation. And we'll call this 3D model. Okay. Uh, next, I'm going to make my script tags. Uh, so this is where it gets a little weird and different from last video. Uh, the first one, we're going to do just as normal. We're going to import 3.js. And then the second one, um, we're going to import as a module. So the way we do that is we do script source 3d.js. And then before that source tag, we're going to do type equals module. And then we can make our actual script tag where we're typing. We don't need to import this 3.module.js. I'll show you what to do with that in just a second. Uh, but for your actual script tag that you're writing your code in, you also need that type module. Uh, just so you can access the, uh, oops, sorry, not 3.js. That was uh, GLTF loader.js. Oops. Loader.js. Yep. Uh, so go ahead and put that type module in your main script tag as well. Uh, without this, uh, the GLTF loader doesn't work. Okay. Uh, so now go ahead and open up uh, GLTF loader.js. And then you're going to scroll down until you see this, where it says uh, it's basically importing a ton of things from that three module.js file. Uh, so you need to link to that. So instead of dot dot slash dot dot slash dot dot slash build, uh, you're going to just do dot slash if it's in your main directory. Uh, and you're going to need that dot slash there. You can't just say three dot module.js. Even if it's in your uh, source directory, you need a dot slash. Uh, so now you're good to go. We're ready. We can start writing our code. Uh, so first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to import that uh, GLTF loader module. Uh, the way we do that is we say import GLTF loader, and then we say from, and then we give the directory to GLTF loader.js again. Let's see, there we go. And then put a semicolon at the end of that line. 
Okay, so uh, now we're gonna go ahead and do the same setup that we did last video. I won't explain this too much in depth because I explained it last video, uh, but I will write it out with you guys. Uh, so I'm gonna make a scene and that is equal to uh, three, three dot scene. Uh, and then I'm going to make my camera. So this is going to be new three, same perspective camera as last time. And we can even have the same values. So we'll use 75 window dot inner width over window dot inner height. That's the aspect ratio. Uh, and then our minimum distance will be 0.1 and our maximum distance will be 1000, just like last time. And then we need to make our render uh, and that is equal to uh, web is equal to new three dot web gl render and then we set the size of the render that is window dot inner width window height Okay. And then lastly, we need to append that to the DOM. So we do document.body.append child. And then that child is going to be the render.dom element. Okay, so now is when the code starts getting different than the last time. We need to import the object. Uh, so to do that, we need to first create our GLTF loader object. Uh, so we're going to do uh, var loader equals new and then we just do GLTF the loader. Okay. Okay, so now we get to load in our object. Uh, so we do loader.load. And then this load function takes two arguments. It takes the name of the file. Uh, so I guess we should get our file, shouldn't we? Uh, when you download, I downloaded just off this website, this uh, Sketchfab website. When I did that, I got uh, these files here. Uh, I got a GLTF file, a bin file, and then a textures file, and then that license file. Uh, this is the license information, by the way. I'll show all of that, just to be clear. Um, so you're going to need, a, if it's exported in GLTF form, all three of these files, the textures, the scene, and the uh, GLTF file. Uh, so I'm just gonna put those into my source directory here. Okay, uh, and so the file name is scene.gltf. Uh, so that is the first argument. And then next, it takes a function of whatever the, and then it takes a function, and that function is essentially what we do with the GLTF information. Uh, so we just uh, are going to make a function, and that function is going to take an argument. Uh, that argument is going to be essentially the event that is being passed through, so the GLTF object information. Uh, so I'm just gonna call that GLTF, it doesn't really matter. Uh, and then I'm going to make those brackets. And then this is what we do with the GLTF. We're going to just add that to our scene. So we essentially just do scene.add, and then we take the GLTF, and then we do dot scene to get the scene information. Uh, I'm not too educated on what is going on here, really, uh, with like what this GLTF object is, uh, but I know that the, uh, the way this importer works is it gives you a scene uh, that you wanna add to your own scene. Uh, so we'll do that. And then one last thing we're going to do is we're actually going to make a variable and we're going to call this object. Uh, and then we're going to save this GLTF scene into this object. So we'll do object equals GLTF dot scene. Okay. Uh, so this is so that we can rotate the object later. Okay, so we've got our object. We just need to add in some lights and then make that animate function. So I'll just real quick make a light. I'm doing a regular hemisphere light with uh, a gradient from uh, white color light to black light at the bottom. Uh, and that'll have an intensity. We'll just set that at two for now. We can change that if that's not enough. We'll do scene dot add light. And then lastly, we're gonna set that camera position. So we'll do camera dot position dot set. Uh, and for now, we'll just do zero, zero, 010. 
We can change that if we're like inside of the object uh, and have problems later. And lastly, we make that animate function. And then run that animate function at the end, and we should be good to go. Uh, so now to open it with the live server, you just right click on the index.html, and then if you have that live server plugin installed, there should be a open with live server button there. So I'll go ahead and do that. And then it opens it up in my browser. Uh, you can see that uh, we did not do our margin reset uh, that we normally do, so I'll do that real quick as a CSS. I'm sorry, yeah, margin, margin zero. And then uh, we'll display block on the canvas. Block. Okay, so that got rid of our problems. You can see that with the live server, it actually automatically updates, which is really convenient. We'll do a quick inspect element to see. It's saying scene.add is not a function in uh, 41. I just went to the console to check the JavaScript errors is what I did there. Uh, so it's giving us issue on line 41. Uh, of our document, so we'll do this, go here, 41, uh, scene.add is not a function. Ah, okay, so the issue was I didn't say new 3.scene, uh, so I was just treating it as if I was uh, setting the function instead of setting it as an object. Uh, so I did that, it fixed it, but it's still black everywhere and we don't see our thing. Uh, so this will happen probably when you import your model. It's kind of hard to tell where the model is if the model is getting enough lighting. So I'll teach you a few helpful things that might help. Uh, first thing is you can actually change the background color of the scene. Uh, so I'll do that. I'll just you just do scene dot background, and then uh, you set that equal to a three color object. So that's just three dot color, uh, and then you pass in a hexadecimal code. So we'll set it to white for now, which is just f f f f f. Okay. Uh, so okay, now we can see the the model is black, and we seem to be under the car. Uh, so let's position ourselves farther away from the car. Okay, now we can see the car pretty well. Uh, we'll put ourselves up above the car a little bit. Okay, let's get a little bit closer. So like 40. Okay, that looks great. So we can see the car uh, and it's looking good. Let's just add in a little bit of rotation so we can see all the way around the car to check it and make sure it is good. Uh, so to do that, we'll just do obj.rotation dot y is the the x-axis for whatever reason uh, and we'll do plus equals we'll just say 0 0.05 okay there it goes and you can see that the car moves uh, let's slow that down to make it look a little more beautiful yeah awesome okay one thing it's a little dark uh, we can just increase the intensity of the color on the hemisphere light all right there we go awesome uh, that is a success these errors here are just because of the live server rebooting uh, and the order in which it's going, you can see if we clear our errors, uh, clear console, there's no errors as it's running. So there we go. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. If you did, please do like and or subscribe, it really helps me out. Uh, and have a great day. Thanks for watching.